I decided that I would be selfish for this first introduction to the first World VR Forum by sharing with you the fact that I, as far as I'm concerned, this World VR Forum is already a success for me on the basis of what I've already learned. It all started yesterday with uh, my train ride from Paris to Geneva, where I was sitting with two of my brilliant colleagues in VR, but different than me in the sense that they are scholars and they have been involved in VR for quite a long time, for years, in researching, analyzing, conceptualizing what VR is about. And this was the, probably the most destructive conversation I've ever had in VR since I started getting involved, let's say, about two years ago. I felt like a complete newcomer. I felt like I was using words that I didn't know the meaning of. I was told that all the concepts that I was using were wrong, that they were not well-defined, that it was not what I thought it was. And I really felt, all of a sudden, I realized that I, was, I had been stepping into a world where I believed that everything was new. I thought VR was new, that it just came up in a way when basically uh, Facebook decided to buy back um, Oculus. I knew, I had read that um, VR had been invented 30, 40 years ago, that it was something that had tried to become available to the general public, but failed and remained something very expensive, very experimental, that only big companies could afford as a tool for research. I knew that. But what I didn't know was that all of the knowledge that had been accumulated, all the analysis, all the concepts that had been uh, defined through these years of the prehistory, in a way, of, um, of VR, made so much sense. For instance, I was told by my colleagues that using the word 3D didn't mean anything. I should use the word stereography because that's what it's about. I was told that my definition of VR was completely off. And as we were moving in the direction of Geneva, I felt completely shattered in my convictions and in my knowledge of, of VR in my experience. And we started building from there and we started exchanging. And I realized that yes, that was the first lesson I learned in that train ride. VR has a past, it has a history, as much as it has a present and certainly a future. And learning by exchanging with my colleagues that in their turn didn't really know what I meant when I said what, that one of my main issues as a, a director and as a producer of VR was, for instance, the problem of stitching. That was not something that was within the realm of their analysis. And I realized, well, yes, that's what, we're, that's what it's about. It's about sharing different points of views on something that is so new, uh, even though it has a past, that we need to equip ourselves with concepts, with references, and with a vocabulary, with a grammar that still remains to be shared by all of us, regardless of the the uh, perspective that we have and the experiences that we have on uh, VR. Then there was the bus ride from Geneva to, uh, to here. And as we had left the train conversation on the issue of interactivity, because I was told that the, the official VR definition included interactivity as a very fundamental concept of what it is, I kept having this conversation of interactivity in VR in my friends in the bus. And indeed, I realized that if VR has a present and has a future, it is definitely connected with interactivity. And I understood that all the prototypes 
the new technologies, the new devices that we are um, using, that we are experimenting and playing with, um, they all have to do with interactivity. Because if VR is, in a way, an illusion of reality, a synthetic reality, in which w the promise is that we can experience being someone else, if we can experience a fully immersive and convincing experience of, a, of an another, a built uh, reality, we need absolutely to be interactive. And this notion of interactivity is key in making the physical moment of the experience uh, superposed on the virtual experience. The two have to match as much as possible to make it believable. I learned, for instance, uh, and this will be discussed further by uh, my brilliant uh, colleagues in much more details, but I learned something I didn't know. I knew that motion sickness, for instance, in VR can be um, equated to seasickness just because the brain cannot reconcile conflicting information coming from one side from the, the, the eyes, the, the optical information that it receives, and the information that it receives, on the other hand, from the vestibular system in our inner ear, which tell the brain, we may, you may think we're on a roller coaster in VR, but we're not because we're just sitting on our chair. And these two uh, conflicting informations cannot be reconciled in the brain, and that's what caused uh, seasickness in boat or motion sickness in VR. But what I didn't know in the details which I found fascinating is that in fact those cells in our inner ear are two kinds. They're the ones that are perched and I hope I'm not I'm not saying anything wrong. This is my rendering of my understanding of this highly informed uh, discussion from my colleagues. Um, we have those cells that are like eyelashes on which, on the top of which sit a little cell that makes uh, th uh, the brain be informed about acceleration and our translation movement. Like if this is, if, if my head is the cell and this is the lash, if I'm moving, it's gonna go like this. So this movement is making the brain understand I'm moving, I'm moving forward. And then there are the other cells that are like little tubes with a little bit of liquid inside, and that when it moves, the liquid moves, and it works like a level uh, for carpenters, and then it tells, oh, okay, we're going this way or that way, and that's when the brain knows that we're moving. So I thought, okay, if for the illusion of a synthetic world created by VR, if for this illusion to work, we need to make sure that we trick not only the optical information for the brain, the audio information for the brain, but also the movement information for the brain, we're going to start moving in the direction where interactivity in VR will need to duplicate the real world experience to such a point that the natural conclusion, the natural consequence of this will be a total blurring of boundaries between the physical world and the virtual world. Where is this leading us? Where is this going to end in a way? How are we going to find the technology, the devices that will allow our inner cell, inner ear cells to be tricked the same way we've learned to trick the brain optically? A question, but that question triggered another one as I was um, uh, in my room yesterday, and I was thinking, but why? Why is it that since the dawn of mankind in the prehistorical caves, trying, you know, applying signs of the hands on the walls of the caves, uh, then starting drawings of nature, of animals, then the art of painting, the invention of perspective at, in the 16th century during the Renaissance, then photography, film, the invention of sound, of color in film, and 3D, sorry, stereography. Um, the, why is it that we keep trying to represent the world in the most faithful way? 
why do we need to project ourselves in a world that we create or we recreate or that we invent? Why do we need to escape in fiction uh, worlds? And why is it that this movement of this deep need of representing the world has led us here today uh, to this point where VR is the new frontier, is the new world, and is probably, without a doubt, the most sophisticated um, way to uh, represent the world. I don't know the answer to this, and there are philosophers with us, and maybe they will help us uh, reflect on this, but the, um, um, one of the, 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 the reasons I thought we, we, might, um, we might do this, we might have this craving, is because we don't know why we're here. We don't know why we live. We don't know why we die. We don't know why we are in the world. We don't understand why this happens. Sorry. So a way to escape the existential anxiety of living, of being in the world, is to gain control over another world, over another dimension, which we can control and which we have created, for which we are God in a way. Or is it like quantum physics are teaching us, is it that there is no such thing as reality and that there's an infinite quantity of subjective perceptions of what reality, quote, is? Is it that the very essence of being alive, of being human, the fact that we constantly need to build representations of something that we think is outside of us, is objective, that we call reality, but in fact does not exist? Why are there particles that only exist when someone is looking at them and or exist in different places at the same time? The relativity of the notion of reality, I think, is one of the most fascinating points uh, of, uh, of science today. And it questions the very essence of what it means to be alive. And when I relate this to VR and to how VR is the latest step in our attempt to represent reality, I think that there is a connection and that maybe w the reason why we're so eager to reproduce a faithful, a believable world is because there is no such thing as an outside world outside of our own perceptions. Or maybe a third explanation. Why do we want to reproduce the world like this? Just maybe because it's just fun and because we're just playful beings and we're placed in the world to play. And that the whole purpose of trying to represent a world within which we can function differently with rules that we can invent is because maybe we're only playful animals. I don't know. But then the last lesson that makes it already worthwhile, worth my while being here came this morning at breakfast. And we were sitting with two utterly brilliant colleagues as well at breakfast and we just started a, a casual uh, conversation. And I was thinking as we, I was listening, I was thinking this is really interesting what we're talking about. We're talking about how virtual reality indeed does not disconnect us from reality, but actually enhances and enriches our perception of the physical world and our place in the world in, in reality. I'm sure that all of you have been confronted with this kind of discussion with people who do not share our passion for vi virtual reality and say, oh, but VR, this is the worst situation one can think of. It completely disconnects you, it isolates you, it just um, cancels the whole idea of the collective experience in cinema, in the world where I can come from, which is the world of independent filmmaking. Everyone tells me this. Why are you so passionate about something that just destroys the whole notion of the collective experience in cinema? 
Yes, it's not something that you can collectively experience. I per personally don't like any longer the so-called collective experience in the cinema. I think it's dirty. I think people don't talk to each other. I don't see what I'm sharing with the people that I'm sitting in a, in a cinema with. Maybe in a comedy, the fact that we're all laughing together is what unites us. But I. I'm not sure the collective experience has the same depth and the same wealth of um, social um, uh, experience as it used to have. Anyway, this notion of saying VR disconnects you and isolates you, I'm not sure is valid. What does it bring us when we can be someone else? What is the value of the illusion, but the convincing illusion of being someone else, of seeing the world from a different perspective than from our sensory uh, experience. How freeing, how liberating is it really when you can step outside of the constraints of your physical body and experience in an immersive way the world in a, different, in a completely different way? So all the, these are just some of the questions and some of the informations I've been receiving. And I just want to close in saying that I think one of the beauties of the World VR Forum here is that, to my knowledge, it's one of the very first events that bring people like all of us coming from sociology, philosophy, science, um, technology, but also the creative field, writers, directors, um, producers. We are here to share this new, um, th the new elements that we are gathering in the exploration of this unknown territory that is brand new, even though it has a past on top of having a present and a future. The idea of bringing together completely different perspectives on this new territory is what is exciting from my point of view here um, at uh, the World VR Forum. So welcome all of you. I'm very much looking forward to uh, sharing our doubts, our questions, our passion, our excitement, and come out of it, each of us, fuller, richer, and more convinced than ever that VR is an absolutely fascinating field to uh, explore today. Thank you very much. Thank you.